Hi everyone, Brian from Sui Generis Brewing, and it's time for the 17th episode, and hopefully penultimate episode, of the 50 Meter Beer Project. So today is Monday, December 18th, 2023, but everything I'm about to tell you about actually took place yesterday on Sunday. And on Sunday, I finally got to brew the beer that I've been working on since April. For those of you who maybe haven't seen the series, back in April, I planted some barley, I grew it up, harvested it, malted it, and that's what I'm gonna use for the base of my beer. But that's only the beginning of this project. I also grew the hops. From the barley, I isolated wild yeast, which I'm gonna to use to ferment the beer. And if all that wasn't enough, on Friday night in the pitch black, I went and found the old well on our property, and using a hand pump, actually collected the water for the beer as well. So 100% of the ingredients going into this beer were grown or came from within 50 meters of my home. So pretty cool. Hopefully the beer is as uh, tasty as the project was interesting. Now when it came to formulating this recipe, uh, I did make two different malts. One of them was sort of a more classic base malt, although it ended up with a little bit of lactobacillus growth. And it also got a little bit darker than I expected when uh, kilning it. Uh, so that's maybe a little bit more of a character malt now than it is uh, a base malt. And from the bear barley, I produce something similar to a brew malt, uh, which is still a base malt, but it's a little bit more of a, a malty flavored malt. And those are what uh, I ended up using as the malts in my beer. Now, thanks to the tests I did in the previous video, I knew roughly how much gravity I should get from those malts. And so I was able to formulate a 12 liter recipe that should have a reasonable starting gravity of about 1048. One thing I did a little bit differently in this recipe is because it's a half batch, I decided to go with a full volume mash rather than a conventional mash and sparge. And my rationale behind that is with the Bruzilla that I have, when I've tried to do half batches in the past, because there's so much volume trapped below the mash part of the system, the amount of volume left for sparging is actually pretty small. I mean, you end up with most of your water below the grain bed, uh, and then of course you need to flood the grain bed, and that doesn't leave you a lot of volume to sparge with. So rather than trying to sparge, I just decided to put all the water in up front and just do a full volume mash. But this is where I made a mistake. And the reason I say I made a mistake is I created a new equipment profile in Brewfather for this. I imported just the Brewfather's Bruzilla settings and then tweaked them for full volume mashes. But I think in Brewfather, they assume that it's a 240 volt Brusilla, mine is 120 volt. And so the boil off rate was quite a bit higher than what I actually got. And as you might imagine, that had some consequences on the final gravity. But that thankfully is really the only mistake that I had in the entire um, design of the recipe and in the brew day itself. Now in terms of the hops, I of course had no idea what the alpha acid content of those hops were. Uh, they're Canadian red vines, so they typically range between 5 and 8%. So I assumed that they were at 5%. And I picked a bitterness level that is sort of average for a pale ale style beer. Uh, so for those of you who think in terms of bitterness units to grain units, I used 0.52 bitterness units to grain units. Or in other words, about 24 IBUs for the 1048 beer. That way, if my hops were a little bit more bitter than expected, it would still be fine, reasonably balanced beer. And also, if they were a little less bitter than expected, it would still be a fine and reasonably balanced beer. Now, in addition to the bittering addition, which I added uh, at the beginning of the boil, and it's a 90 minute boil, I also added a 30 minute flavor addition of 15 grams and a flame out addition, a Rome addition, also 15 grams. So trying to get reasonable hop character, but without so much that it would dominate the malt and the yeast character that I'm also uh, hoping to be able to pick up in this beer. So that was the design of the beer. And so the next step, of course, was the brew day itself. Now the brew day itself was pretty uneventful, but for one thing. And of course it was the first thing in the brew day where I struggled a little bit. And that was with the milling of the grain. I don't know if it was because of the smaller size of that bare barley, or if it's because I over dried the malt once I made it, but boy, it was hard to mill that grain. I really struggled to get it to go through the mill. And in fact, I had to open up my mill and mill it at a fairly coarse setting. 
and then close that down and mill it a second time to actually get to the grade that I wanted. But once it was milled, everything else was fine. I mashed in, I quickly checked the pH and all of that seemed to be okay. And just like in my malting tests, I actually had full conversion at 15 minutes. So my concerns about the beer not converting that I mentioned in my previous video were unfounded. The beer converted just fine. 15 minutes after I started the starch test was negative. I still went for a full 60 minutes because I wanted a relatively fermentable wort and it often takes a little bit longer than what a starch test would indicate for that to take place. That mash was done at 67, again to give sort of a, a bit of body to the beer, but not too much. At which point I then raised the temperature to 76 degrees for a mash out, and then pulled the grain and allowed the water to drain, while bringing everything up to a boil. As soon as it was boiling, I added in my bittering addition, and I then proceeded with a 90 minute boil. Now the reason I went with a 90 minute boil was twofold. One was I wanted to get every little bit of sugar out of the grain that I could, and so that just gives me an opportunity to collect a little bit larger of a sparge volume, or mash volume I guess in this case, uh, to, and then concentrate that down with the longer boil. But the second reason was because I was worried about DMS in the grain. Uh, some of my test batches had DMS, and I wasn't too sure what I would get with this one. And I'm glad I did the 90 minute boil because let me tell you, for the first half hour, it smelled like cooking vegetables, which is classic DMS. Um, but by the end of the boil and certainly the finished wort, that aroma was completely gone. So 30 minutes before the end of the boil, I added my flavor addition. 10 minutes before the end of the boil, I added some Warflock, the only ingredient not from my farm. And at zero minutes, I added the flame out addition, chilled the beer, transferred it into a small carboy, and then pitched the wild yeast. Now you'll notice here in the video, I actually pitch two vials of yeast, and that's not because I'm adding two different yeasts. My large flask is missing, uh, so I used two smaller containers to grow up enough yeast for this project. So today's the next day. As you can see in the little inlay video, the beer is fermenting very strongly. Uh, got a, quite a nice fermentation going here. So hopefully sometime early in the new year, I'll be able to cake this and sometime in mid to late January, we can probably do a taste test or two. And so that's it for today's video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.